Outlaw Lawyer. Welcome back into the Outlaw Lawyer. Josh Whitaker and Joe Hamer on set, and we are talking legalese. Whitaker and Hamer Law Firm is where you can find them during the week. Uh, they're managing partners there, and again, practicing attorneys here in the great state of North Carolina. Uh, we get into legal topics. You're going to have your own legal questions, maybe something you're going through. And if you need answers, I've got a number for you, 800-659-1186. That's 800-659-1186. Just leave contact information, briefly what the call's about, and an attorney will be in touch with you with Whitaker and Hamer. Always, you can email your questions to the program, questions at theoutlawlawyer.com. Gentlemen, where are we going next? Well, we got we got two stories I wanted to talk about in, in this segment. Uh, one, I didn't pay a lot of attention to this when it happened, but you know, it was kind of a crazy summer in 2020. There's a lot of different things going on. Um, a lot of stuff happening in Michigan with uh, a BLM protest, and then they had a lot of pandemic. That was a state that had a lot of pandemic lockdowns. What a it, crazy year! It was nuts. <laughs> that man. was. I think. I think like our kids will learn about that, like we learned about like 1968. Yeah. I think, yeah. Right. That's going to be there. 2020 is there. 1968. Um, but anyway, it was a crazy time. But one of the stories that came up was there was uh, the FBI foiled uh, a reported kidnapping attack, uh, attempt of uh, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who was, depending on how you felt about the pandemic and how you felt about lockdowns, was either really, really uh, popular or really, really derived. Yeah, it was very few, like... She's doing an okay job. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> or terrible. I had right? forgotten about yeah. it, but you know, there was a story. You know, she had locked down everything, right? Yeah. So Michigan's Upper Peninsula is a big vacation area. Do uh -huh. you remember this? Yeah. And uh, so she had locked down everything. Like I can't remember what it was, but basically, if you had a second home, she's like, you can't even, you can't go to your second yeah. home. Um, and so they had a second home, I guess, her and her husband in the Upper Peninsula. And so her husband called the marina that serviced this lake or wherever they were. And he was like, I'm the governor's husband, and you're going to put my boat in the water, and I don't care about any of these restrictions, you know. But do you remember that story? I, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around a group of people sitting around thinking it might be a good idea to plot yeah. to kidnap a sitting governor. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the thing. I didn't hear much about the story. I heard it happen. You're like, oh, that's terrible. No one wants that to happen. No matter how much you like or dislike your governor, you're not rooting for them to get sure. kidnapped by an of all the things militia. you're rooting for. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so bad news, but I didn't hear much else from the story. And now, so now we're finally getting to the point where some of these defendants, some of the people charged in in this attempt, and, and and I, I'm doing air quotes if you're listening to the radio, like attempt in quotation marks, because a lot of these defendants, some have pled guilty, and they've got sentence. I think one or possibly two have, have pled guilty, and um, the other defendants are like, no, 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 uh, I was entrapped, because basically they're they're alleging there was a three F, three or four FBI informants involved. Um, the FBI informant started this chat group and, and put out an ad for for help in doing this and 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 it sounds like maybe there was some missteps. You know, the government <laughs> help ad. <laughs> they, I think they want. That's wanted, not funny, man. But it's ah. So they the, Craigslist. I don't know. So this informant, these informants, kind of attracted these these guys to kind of talk about this a, attempt. But I guess that's part of the argument is like, hey, our guys were. You know, you're the one who. You know, you, the FBI, you're yeah. the one who created this situation. And, yeah, they shouldn't have been going along with you, but they weren't instrumental sure. in the formation of this plan. And so there was three FBI informants, I guess, involved, and they've all left the FBI. Mm -hmm. I think one got charged for doing something, drugs or something. Uh, but they're, they're, none of them are with the FBI, and they all left under not great um, They all had some form of transgression. Right. Yeah. So all these FBI informants that helped put this case together are, are gone. And so the attorneys that represent these defendants on some very serious charges are kind of looking at it now and saying, well, wait a minute, what exactly did my guy do? You know, how did they get involved? Were they um, entrapped by the government? And entrapment's a defense that you don't really see often. It doesn't work often. Sure. Because the government can, can do a lot um, to try to get information on, on an active criminal enterprise. Um, and Which we, is a good, I mean. We want that. Yeah, exactly. We want that. But there is a there is a tipping point where the government becomes maybe the primary bad actor, yeah. um, trying to get people you know into something like this. And and so here, I think it's just interesting because I'm they're going to go to trial, right? There's been no plea deal in federal court. A lot of times there uh, there are plea deals, but it sounds like this is going to go to trial. And this entrapment defense, which is again not successful often, is there. 
Yeah, their ace of spades are big. Is that the big so, card? What do you yeah, say? Yeah, so yeah, in yeah, layman's terms, works. in layman's terms, you're saying, or they're saying, I should, their defense is saying that they were nudged in the direction of the kidnapping. Yeah, I think it's more than a nudge. I think a, a, I think a nudge is, is arguably permissible. Uh, but there's, there's a line where it becomes, you know, they, where it becomes entrapment. And it's a difficult, difficult thing to prove. And there was some planning, like they, I think they sent one of the guys to like look at, they figured out where she lived and they, you know, they, they, I guess they got some supplies. But when you actually lay out the federal government's argument on this, and again, I just read a couple of articles. I haven't seen what you would see at a trial or what you'd see if you were defending. But to me, it looks kind of weak when, yeah. you, when you lay it all out there. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's fair. But, uh, but I'm, no, I'm no federal judge. I, I, I don't know. But it's gonna, that's another one we're going to be watching because I think that's interesting. If the entrapment defense works, you just don't see that play out very often. No, no, you don't. And uh, it'll be interesting to see it play out and to see the, the approach and to see whether it's successful. So yeah. Much more successful than the plot to kidnap the governor was. Yeah. I think 2020 made people do weird things, man. These, these people, surely... That should just be a defense. It was, yeah, 20, it was, it was 2020. 2020. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It was it a would, crazy time. Wouldn't it be interesting, like, if we could just flash forward 20 years and look back yeah. uh, and how society is, is viewing what we went through in 2020, 2021? It'd be 20. hard to explain. It'd be hard to explain to people 20 years ago, man, for sure. And there's another story I want to talk about, but you've been following it closer than me. Yeah, so we, we've got uh, Cain Velasquez, uh, UFC fighter, mm -hmm. d d reached the peak level of the sport. I mean, there was a period of time where he was considered like one of the pound for pound best to ever do it. Very, very successful. Um, by all accounts, a, a sweetheart of a guy, like very well liked by his peers, um, which is, it's weird to think of someone who beats people <laughs> up as a sweetheart of a guy, but uh, by all accounts, a, a, a good person. Um, arrested recently for, for multiple attempted murder charges. So when this news came out, you know, the, the, the initial story was just that he had basically fired on a vehicle uh, with people in it, and he had hit it. I think he had hit one of the individuals. Very confusing story if you know anything about Cain Velasquez. And so that was the initial report. A lot of people come out in support of him. Turns out, uh, you know, that apparently there was a, an individual who, I don't know the exact facts, I think worked at a daycare with one of his kids yeah, yeah, and had, that. like, for an extended period of time, molested one of his, his young children. For like an extended period of time. And that person, I think, was was arrested, charged, and then ultimately released. And then he decided to, to kind of take the law into his own hands and go kind of vigilante style. And yeah. unfortunately, fired on the vehicle and, and didn't even hit the individual that he was he was going after. I think he hit that person's stepfather. But um, Well, I think the interesting thing so far is, is and you mentioned this earlier, is he's being held in, of course, three counts of attempted murder is what it sounds like the charges are. There'll probably be some more charges, but no bail. Yeah, no bail, and that's the that's the thing. You've seen a ton of of high profile people, um, you know, be it celebrities, UFC fighters, people who know him have written in support of him receiving bail, basically. So there's been a large, you know, groundswell of support for him to to be released. Because I mean, it's hard to say he's he's a flight risk. You know, it's it's. It's it's very I think I think uh, I don't spend my day to day in criminal law, but uh, we do handle a lot of criminal law at the firm. To be denied bail is, is a big step, and flight risk is one of the things that go yeah, into it. Yeah. You know, danger to yourself or, or the community. And I don't know that we have. I mean, just another attempted murder. I'm doing a lot of air quotes today because yeah, we're on yeah. TV. Does it translate to the radio? It's a tough one, man. That's a tough one because. You know, we talk about these terrible things that people do, and we advocate for the system, how important that system is. And uh, but it's it, it's about as tough of a thing to say that on when you're talking about you know someone you know molesting children, abusing children. Like that's when it really becomes difficult, man. And as a as a a legal analyst, you can step back and you can say, you know, this is, he shouldn't do this. Let the system play out." But then as like a father to oh, children, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's very easy to understand how he, like it's, it's, you can see it, right? Like oh, yeah. you can understand it. Yeah. Um, not a monster. Not a monster. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's, and, and he, what, it, what doesn't make sense to me is why shoot at him? Like he, you just, 
you could just grab this man, honestly, <laughs> like at the end of the day. And, yeah. uh, you know, but, but, but that'll be an interesting one to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, the, the no bail part is, is the most, you know, again, looking at it from a legal angle and not a father, not a victim and not a defendant, but the denying bail to someone who doesn't appear to be a flight risk doesn't appear like he's going to harm anybody else randomly. Yep. It's clearly, there was a clearly a motive. I, I don't, I don't get it. But This reminds me of, uh, we, we're going back to our long abandoned legal movie tournament. That's going to come back into play one of these days. <laughs> time to kill. You can't comment on it because you've never seen, seen the movie. It. It. It's basically it. a time to kill with Samuel L. Jackson playing the part of Cain Velasquez. You should check that movie out. Does he get denied bail in there? No, he, um, he, he gets arrested, and there's, like, racial tension that's involved in this as well. Basically, his, his kid gets, like, brutally raped. He kills the, the people responsible, some of them. And uh, Matthew McConaughey is his attorney, one of the great movie attorneys of all time. He gets them off, actually. Uh, he gets them off. So. Interesting. Yeah. I'll watch it one day. All right. Well, we are going to wrap up the program immediately following this break. The Outlaw Lawyers, Josh Whitaker and Joe Hamer. You can find them at Whitaker and Hamer Law Firm. Uh, if you've got your own legal situation, you've got questions, here's a number for you. You can call it 800-659-1186. That's 800-659-1186. Just leave contact information, briefly what the call's about, and an attorney with Whitaker and Hamer will be in touch. You can also email your questions to the program, questions at theoutlawlawyer.com. We're back right after this to wrap it up. 